but he strikes out Carl Everett, and then he strikes out Mitre Cummings to end the game. But after the game, all the talk was about Andy Pettit, and we spoke to Joe Torre about that subject. If I'm not mistaken, he matched up with Pedro here. We beat him 3 nothing when he gave up the three home runs. Andy is on a roll. I mean, he, he is so confident now. Um, he is, I don't know, I don't know what I can say. It, it, was a, it was a great matchup, and, you know, it doesn't happen very often, but he outpitched him today. He always <laughs> talks about when he's best when he works quickly, which he did again today. He was great. I, I mean, he, he was getting, the, I mean, the double play he got on Garcia Parr, uh, you know, even the, the hit by... Uh, by Everett, you know, it, it, you know, it was a fly ball, but I mean, it, in this ballpark, it's a double. There's, there's no question. You know, he tried to get it in. I think he did get it in, but not enough. He's strong. Everett's strong, but he had a purpose for every pitch he threw, and, and uh, probably the last hitter he faced, he was as determined as, as anybody else, because uh, you know, Jose fouled off a number of pitches before he finally got him to ground out. And Brocious is at bat with the home run. Well, you know, 0 and 2, but when he goes to 3 and 2, you get to see a few pitches. And, and I don't know how many times we've seen this with uh, with Brocious. I don't care what kind of a year he's having. It gets late in the game of a key game, and all of a sudden something good happens. And it was just like, I mean, it was that deja vu stuff all over again. Really, Andy is the story of the game, you know, to come out. And any time you know, you're facing the other guy there on the mound, I know he's thinking that he's got to really hold him down. And, and uh, he threw great, kept us right there, and, and we were fortunate to uh, scratch out some runs for him. Can you take us through that at bat? It looked like Pedro started you off with some changes. Was the home run on a change also? Yeah, uh, he started with two change-ups, and, and, you know, so I was sitting 0-2, and, and then I saw a little bit of everything, some hard stuff away, and I think I saw one breaking ball. And kind of in the back of my mind, I had a feeling it, He's going to try to go back to it just because I, you know, swung through the first two. And, and uh, you know, so I just told myself, you know, if it comes, just make sure, you know, I try to stay back as best I can and, and hope it's up. And I think he just left it up more than he wanted to. Now, Petta was great. I mean, he was the story of the game. He goes up against Pedro for the second time this year, and he had great cutters working against right-handed batters. He strikes out Darren Lewis. He ends up striking out Jose Offerman, all on the cutter. Dante Bichette also goes down on the cutter, and Andy Pettit was absolutely dealing. He didn't get intimidated all enough that we spoke with him. Andy, is this as really as good a group as you've been in quite a while? Yeah, it is. I, I feel good. You know, um, to tell you the truth, starting the game, I, I was a little shaky. I was leaving some balls over the plate for the first uh, three innings or so, and then I really got in a good groove and, and loosened up. And you know, I don't know what I, I was really making some mistakes, but I, towards the, late, the game got later, I, I was feeling stronger. The game notes: Andy Pettit has been great. He's nine and one in his last ten starts. Jose Canseco, well, he becomes the first player to homer at Fenway Park for six different teams. And Derek Jeter continues his hot streak, 34 straight games on base. That's the second longest streak in the major leagues this year. Now, the American League East standings, it really all comes down to the Yankees against the Red Sox. The Yankees now have an eight-game lead. And, boy, although they haven't clinched, their magic number is 16. And that's about as good as it gets. The Red Sox really do have to win these next two games. Boston also falls to third in the wild card situation. So these are important games for the Boston Red Sox. As Oakland is now two and a half games behind first place Cleveland for the wild card. Now, the matchup today is a very interesting one. It's rookie against veteran. Imagine if you're a rookie and you go for your first big league start here at Fenway Park. That's the deal with Randy Keesler against Pete Shirk. The Yankees have not started a rookie in his first big league game here at Fenway Park since Bob Meyer did it back in 1964. Now, Keesler pitched in double A this year, and he also pitched in triple A. And we have to unearth some of the stats and some of the pictures from triple A. Here he is pitching against Pawtucket, and he gets Sadler. And then he also gets Burkhart, and uh, he will be facing some of those two guys walking up the field. He hopes he's as happy now. Now, Pete Short last week against the A's, well, he surrenders a big-time home run to Jason Giambi. But later on, he settles down with breaking balls. He gets people out, Velarde, Terrence Long, and Mike Stanley all on the breaking ball. You can see how it just breaks down and in on the right-hander, and the same thing with Mike Stanley as well. Now, the Pete Shurik is 3-9, and nine, and he's been shaky so far this year. And Kiesler, this is his first big league start. He was 8-3 and three in Columbus, though, and the Yankees really like his stuff. They really look forward to a pretty good situation here in Boston. For the Yankees, Chuck Nalbaugh is going to lead off. 
Derek Jeter and then Bernie Williams back in the lineup. Jose Canseco, David Justice, and Glenn Allen Hill will try left field. Tino Martinez, Jorge Posada, and Scott Brocious round out the bottom third of the order. Now for the Boston Red Sox. Darren Lewis at the top, then Jose Offerman will bat second. Carl Everett will play center field and bat third. No more Garcia Parra cleans up. Dante Bichette will be the DH and bat fifth. Troy O'Leary, Lou Merloni, and Scott Hatterberg. And then Donnie Sadler, who Keesler certainly has some experience against because he faced him against Pawtucket. He will be the second baseman, and he will bat ninth. Well, we're all set up for this game, but we want to get you caught up on what happened in the world of sports last night when we come back Sports Desk with Deb Kaufman. You passed on that internet stock and that lakefront property. Well, now, during the Chrysler 2000 final clearance, make up for it with our biggest cash allowances of the year on new 2000 models. Choose up to a 3000 cash allowance on Chrysler minivans or choose a 1000 cash allowance plus less than 1% financing. That's 0.9 APR and 1000 cash. Hey, you passed on that chain of coffee houses. So get to the Chrysler 2000 final clearance only at your Chrysler dealer. William swings, there's a high drive, going deep, deep, it is... There it goes, a long drive, if it stays fair, home run! Old Alex Rogers bat that when he hit his 61st home run, and uh, that touched, touched it with my heart. Now I can honestly say that my bat will lie next to his. The Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. Be a part of it. For information, call 1-888-HALL-OF-FAME or visit us on the web at baseballhalloffame.org. If you lived before our time, who would you be? What if you could choose from a thousand yesterdays when the past was today and the new took your breath away? Who would you be? How would you live? Who would you love? Living every generation before us, remembering for generations to come, the History Channel, where the past comes alive. Great. How are you going to get it out the door? I like you, Robert. You're watching the New York Marriott Marquis Yankee Scorecard. The New York Marriott Marquis. Broadway's biggest hit, brought to you in part by your local Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Hi there, back with more on New York Yankee Scorecard. I'm Deb Kaufman with an update from the MSG Sports Desk. The Indians may not catch the White Sox, but they did prevent Chicago from stretching their lead in the American League Central for at least another day. Cleveland pounding out the runs on Saturday in a 9-3 win over the White Sox. Robbie Alomar was pounding out the doubles. He was 4 for 5 yesterday with 3 doubles against the Sox. This was the first. He drove in the first run of the day, driving in Omar Vizquel, and it was 1-0 Indians. They would score three in that opening frame. Another double, this one from Travis Fryman. And John Garland struggling. That looked like it would leave the park. It scores Jim Tomey. So the Indians with a three-run first, they go on to win it by the final of 9-3. The A's crushing at least one home run in each of the first five innings against Tampa Bay. The hapless Devil Rays. Jason Giambi knocking one out off of Alvy Lopez to make it 2-0. Giambi had two on the day. The next one coming in his next at bat. In the bottom of the third, Giambi was two for three with those two home runs. He had three RBIs and Oakland wins in a romp 10 to nothing. So Oakland wipes out Tampa Bay. 10 zip. The Tigers losing by one run to the Blue Jays in Toronto 6-5, and it was the Orioles all over the Angels 10-3 in Anaheim. 
The Mets have been having trouble at the plate. Last night they had trouble in the field. Two errors from the reliable Edgardo Alfonso at second base, plus a three-run home run allowed by Armando Benitez in the ninth. Does in the Mets. The Phillies win again. The final was 6-3. to three. So the Mets are struggling, and last night did not help. Derek Bell in the field. Nothing wrong with the play that he made to start this one off. A terrific catch up against the wall, and Derek Bell saving an extra base hit, maybe even a home run early on for the Mets. The last three weeks. Philadelphia with one nothing lead, and here's Edgardo Alfonso. He drives in the Mets' first run of the night. It's a double into deep center field. So Alfonso ties the game at one. But then, Timonio Perez in center field trying to go home. This turns out to be a run scoring sacrifice fly as Piazza cannot get the tag down in time. They nearly got the run at the place, but they can't. Pat Burrell now for the Phillies with a 2 1 lead, and Turk Wendell didn't have it last night, and Edgardo Alfonso didn't help. Bobby Abreu will score when Derek Bell's throw goes to second, so not a good play by Bell. That'll be all for Turk Wendell. And just to show you how much he thinks of the own, his own performance last night, he tosses his glove into the crowd. It didn't do him much good, and it didn't do the Mets much good. Again, they lose it by the final of 6-3. to three. Elsewhere, the Rockies score six times in the first and then hold on for dear life to beat the Dodgers 7-6. Todd Helton goes one for four. The Astros with 14 runs. They had six home runs. Runs. Tim Bogar had two of them. They beat the Cubs 14 to four. The Padres beat Russ Ortiz and the Giants 7 three. Um, can't, that, that final there 7 to three. San Francisco's lead is still uh, six games though on Arizona. The Reds uh, beat the Pirates six to four. Ken Griffey with three hits. And how about Todd Stottlemyre coming back to go seven and a third? He gets the win for the Diamondbacks as they beat the Marlins four to one. So that's the story in the National League for now. We're going to send you back to Fenway Park in Boston for the rest of the late scores. I'm Deb Kaufman. We'll see you later. Thanks a lot, Deb. Now, if you didn't get the late newspapers, here are some of the late scores. Texas beat Kansas City 6-5. Zimmerman, who has not had a good year, picks up the win. Suzuki takes a loss. And Wetland, who might be in his last season, picks up his 32nd save of the year. Minnesota, Seattle, that's a big game for Seattle. They win 7-2. Jamie Moyer back on the beam. He's 12-9. And Mark Redmond took the loss. He's also 12-9. It took 12 innings. Montreal beat Atlanta. And the Mets breathe a sigh of relief. Montreal 7-5 over Atlanta. Santana the win, 1-5. Seelbach took the loss. 0-1 for the Braves. And St. Louis beats Milwaukee 7-6 as the Cardinals are running away with the Central. Dave Beers gets the win, 3-4. And, and Juan Acevedo took the loss. He's 3-6. When we get back, it's time for Susan Wallman to talk with Louis Soho. We call him Yankee Spackle. He fills every hole that they possibly have. Susan and Soho coming up next. This is Chuck Knobloch of the world champion New York Yankees. Congratulations, MSG Network, on 30 years. Uh, enjoy it, New York. Homeowners, call Garden State Brick Bay's window. Hundreds upon hundreds of pictures of happy customers hang in tribute to Marchese Chevrolet, a small town dealership of impeccable reputation. Marchese Chevrolet is dedicated to quality service before, during, and after the sale. Stop in today and see why everyone is smiling. Join the Marchese Chevrolet Wall of Fame, where your smile says it all. Marchese Chevrolet, scenic West Point area, where friends send friends. Route 9W, Fort Montgomery. Come on down to 1A Ranch Steakhouse. They've got delicious barbecue chicken and the baby back ribs are to die for. I can't believe you're doing this. Well, come on. They have seafood and the ranch sandwiches. Oh, please. They have a menu that's just great for the youngins, and I could graze all day at the 1A Ranch salad bar. Yeah, that is good. But the most popular item on the menu is... Don't say it. I can't do this. Where's my agent? People are talking about Franzoso contracting, and what they're saying isn't good. It's great. Everything was done as promised, and um, that we were just so pleased with, uh, you know, the work that went into the home. I'm very happy with the work he's done. His men have been very, very good. It's really been wonderful.
Franzoso Contracting, where we specialize in seamless siding, custom roofs, and innovative renovations. Franzoso Contracting, we want to help you build a better future. It's Broadway's longest-running musical review ever on Media One. Nominated for seven Tony Awards, including Best Musical. Broadway's smash hit is coming to pay-per-view television. Smokey Joe's Cafe is in demand with a star-studded pre-show live from Broadway, one night only. On Broadway! Smokey Joe's Cafe, September 10th, is in demand on Media One. Fenway Park, and it is a tough ticket. This place opened up the day that the Titanic went down in 1912, and it is a baseball cathedral. It's such a great day for baseball, it really is. Welcome back to the New York Marriott Marquis Yankee Scorecard. I'm Michael Kay. You know, during the offseason, the Yankees let Luis Soho go because they thought D'Angelo Jimenez was going to be their backup infielder. Well, Jimenez got into a car accident three days after Soho signed with the Pirates. While the Yankees spent most of the season trying to get Soho back, he desperately wanted to be in pinstripes. When they finally got him back, it was at the right time because that's when Chuck Knobloch had to be shut down. You know, Soho's been a godsend for the Yankees. He's done everything that they could possibly want. So Susan Waltman sat down with him a couple of days ago and spoke about being a Yankee again. Louis, at the end of last year, did you know or did you have a feeling that maybe the Yankees weren't going to pick up your option and, and your days as a Yankee were going to be over? Did you know that when the season ended? Uh, to be honest with you, yes. Uh, because D'Angelo, he did such a good job last year in September. I mean, he played good defense, hit the ball real good. So I thought, you know, they have Clay and now they have this young guy. But um, I mean, I knew it right away. But in my mind, you know, I, think, I still think that I could come back. But it uh, didn't happen. But I'm uh, here now. What, was it hard for you? Was that the kind of thing that was that was hard? Because you really had found a home here and you were such a help to all the young, particularly the young Latin players. Was that hard? You knew in your head that it was maybe time for D'Angelo to play, but in your heart, that must have been very difficult. Oh yeah, it was. Uh, because, you know, during the winter, uh, I keep talking to Derek, you know, and, uh, you know, I say, well, what are you going to do? I mean, well, I want to come back, you know, <laughs> see. I don't know what they're going to do, but uh, it was real hard for me because, like you say, I find a home for me, you know, and, and when you're winning, it's always fun. But on the other hand, I understand, you know, the situation uh, that they got this young kid, but, I mean, I don't know what to do, you know, and then next thing you know, I was in the National League, and, well, but the most important thing right now is I'm here and, and happy. When you're in Pittsburgh, you're, when you play in the National League and you play, uh, you played a lot. And I remember they tried to get you over here in spring training when D'Angelo got hurt, and they knew. Did you know all those talks were going on? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I, the general money over there, he was real nice to me. You know, he, he keep in touch with me the whole time. Like hey, this guy want tried to get you back, and but we need you here. And uh, there's nothing I can do, you know. And uh, like I say, I've talked to Jorge and Tino and Derek the whole year, you know, even when I had them play over there, me and Dale Swain, you know, we in the video room watching Yankees game <laughs> because, you know, it's like I never left. I mean, this is the place that I want to be in and I always keep in touch with my boys and it was real hard, even that I was playing over there, you know, having a good time, but uh, in, your, in your mind, it's, it's, it's different. When you're over there, this is a team that loses a lot of games. It's very different. There's a lot of youngsters there. They're trying to build for the future. Not a lot of high money players. How how hard was that? And what do you learn from playing on a on a losing team? Well, uh, it was tough because, like you said, these guys you know try to build a team and uh, they got a very good team. They just you know I, I think they don't have that feeling how to win stuff like that. You know when you win. I think it's different. Like when you lose every day, it's, it's kind of hard. It's like a, the guys give up in the first couple of months of the year. And, uh, you know, they always look up to me, like I say, come on, we got to talk to Luis. You know, he's been in the World Series three times, he's been winning stuff, but uh, it's like they give up. And uh, that was real hard for me, too, because, I mean, you don't know what to do. You know, sometimes these guys struggling, and you want to talk to them, but it was real hard. Here, it's different because you, you're winning, you got veteran guys, and they know what to do, you know. I mean, it's different war. You know, I remember uh, years ago, I think it was uh, 
87 or 88 when when Rafael Santana played for the for the Yankees and the Yankees were losing a lot in the late 80s I remember him bringing over the bottle of champagne from the 86 World Series and showing guys the ring trying to instill that feeling in there particularly with some of the youngsters didn't work because they weren't talented enough but is that what you try and do is that what you tried to do to try and instill some kind of winning feeling over there oh yeah no doubt about it when I remember when I get my ring in, uh, in Pittsburgh we play in Pittsburgh and uh, I was the last guy to saw my ring <laughs> because uh, well, I think it was the 16 GM. He was in New York when they, you guys get the ring and stuff. And then he showed to everybody. And then finally he come to me, hey, this is yours. This belongs to you. So, you know. And then, you know, we talk about that for a week. You know, the, the guy, we're like two games behind, you know, in, uh, behind St. Louis. And I say, guys, this is it. I mean, that's what we need. You know, we, that's what we play for. And. Uh, but I think they don't get the message. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not this year anyway. You walk back in this door. I, I got to tell you, I have never seen anyone so happy in my life. And not only that, everyone else, they were jumping all over you like you know, a long lost uncle or something. You must have been flying so high. That must have been spectacular to walk uh, back in that clubhouse. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like uh, we wait for that call the whole year. You know, my kids, my wife. And I remember when they put me on, um, for assignment. Oh, we in Pigs, we went to eat, and um, I got this call from the GM over there, and he goes, hey, Louis, uh, I've got a good news for you. You might go back to the Yankees. And I, so I, you know, okay, thank you. So I hang up, and I don't say nothing to my wife. And um, okay, like 10 minutes later, Brian Cashman called me, hey, how my boys doing? And he's like, you back. I said, wow. So finally I told my wife, we didn't eat, we leave the food over there, let's go home and pack it and get out of here. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was unbelievable, it was a great feeling. He's much more than a player as well. The players in that clubhouse love him. He's almost a de facto coach. And as a matter of fact, in Kansas City earlier in the week, he was working with Alfonso Soriano on turning the double play from second base. So this guy who's teaching somebody who might take his job and somewhere down the line, you might actually see Luis Soho be a manager somewhere, and he's just thrilled to be back with the Yankees, and he hopes that they don't make the same mistake over the winter and have him go somewhere else. When we come back to the New York Marriott Marquee scorecard, we're going to wrap it up and get you set for baseball. Yankees and the Red Sox. It doesn't get any better. Get through all game programs, only two dollars. You've passed on that internet stock and that lakefront property. Well, now, during the Chrysler 2000 final clearance, make up for it with our biggest cash allowances of the year on new 2000 models. Choose up to a 2000 cash allowance on Chrysler cars or choose less than 1% short-term financing, just 0.9. Plus, there's great lease rates. Hey, you passed on that chain of coffee houses, so get to the Chrysler 2000 final clearance only at your Chrysler dealer. You can be any age, any color, male or female, rich or poor, a couch potato or a professional athlete. Pancreatic cancer is an unbiased equal opportunity killer. It kills over 70 people a day, yet we know almost nothing about it. We need research. The same thing that has helped with heart disease, breast cancer, and AIDS. Back at Fenway Park, we're moments away from the first pitch of the Yankees against the Red Sox. Game three of this three-game set, which continues tomorrow at Yankee Stadium with the makeup of the rainout date. It's Randy Kiesler against Pete Shurek. And for Randy Kiesler, you know, right about now his stomach is churning because he has 16 family and friends in from Texas. He's warming up. They say he's Andy Pettit light. He looks just like Pettit on the mound. Now, this is a funny little story. 16 people from Texas, including his three sisters, and their names are Candy, Mandy, and Sandy. So you've got Candy, Mandy, Sandy, and Randy Kiesler, and they are all in the ballpark. So the Yankees doing the Texas three-step this weekend in Boston. Clemens, Pettit, and now Kiesler. And there's Pete Shurek, the veteran left-hander, defeated the A's. Five and a third innings pitches last time out. Three arm runs, two hits, a walk, and six strikeouts. And he is pitching a very important game for the Boston Red Sox. Now the Yankees, with an eight-game lead, well, their schedule it's going to get a little bit tougher over the next couple of weeks because they play some very important teams. Well, they play the Red Sox 
today and then Monday at Yankee Stadium, then three against the Blue Jays, four against the Indians, then three more against the Blue Jays, and the Tigers, who are on the outskirts of the wild card situation, they play three games against them as well. So that's the next two weeks, and while the Yankees might look like they're in pretty good shape for the American League East, they will play a very large role in deciding the wild card. When we get back, it is time for Yankees baseball. The greatest rivalry in the world on the greatest network in the world. You better keep it right here. You've been watching the New York Marriott Marquis Yankee Scorecard. The New York Marriott Marquis, Broadway's biggest hit. And by Die Hard, the battery America trusts more. Available at Sears. He's really struggling with this control. There's another one down on the dirt. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yep. Time to switch. Yep. Make the call. Yep. Hello there. I want to switch to AT&T Local Service. Get local and long distance all in one. Switch to AT&T Local One Rate and make communicating easy. So I wasn't thinking what you were thinking? Switch now <laughs> and get it all together with one great deal. Zim, you made a great call. Working for a big company was not for me. So I took a risk and started Mad River Boat Trips. Fortunately, I made some smart decisions early on, like hooking up with a small business group at American Express. These guys really know what we need. They helped us figure out easier ways to pay for inventory. And now when we buy things online with the card, it's never been safer. You know, I couldn't work for a big company, but I don't mind having a big company work for me. What can we do for your business? Call 1-800-SUCCESS. Are you ready for the fall blitz sale at the Wiz? Kick off the new season with the hottest new technology and hit the Wiz now for super savings on big screen TVs. Tackle the action with Sony's 53-inch projection TV on sale for only $19.99.99. And listen up, get a kick and compact computer system with monitor and color printer for just $7.99.99. Catch the savings, catch the action. It's the fall blitz sale at the Wiz. The best of technology and your ticket to entertainment. When things get hot, nothing refreshes you like the frost fruit taste of Coors Light. Rock Falls, Illinois. That's my town. Oh, there's Mike Downing. Square Garden Network presents New York Yankees baseball. And today, the two-time world champion New York Yankees take on the Boston Red Sox in the third game of this slate at Fenway Park in Boston, Massachusetts. And today, the pitching matchup. Rookie Randy Kiesler will go for the Yankees 8-3, 3.02 in Columbus against the veteran Pete Shurik, 3-9 with a 5.05. One of the most famous shots in sport, Fenway Park opened up in 1912, the host of many great games, and the first two games of this series, they were dandies as well. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Yankee Baseball. I'm Michael Kay, and what a day for baseball here at Fenway Park. And if you think about it, it's a pretty good matchup as well. We told you Randy Kiesler against Pete Shurik. Also, Bernie Williams is back in the lineup for the Yankees. But the big news for the Yankees has to be the fact that they beat Pedro Martinez yesterday in a game that the Yankees had to have and the Red Sox definitely had to have. But Andy Pettit was up to the task. He outdueled Pedro Martinez and he did it in a big way. He had everything working. He came out with great confidence and he had the cutter working as well. Here Darren Lewis goes down just diving down and in. Jose Offerman is going to suffer the same fate as well. Same sort of pitch, down and in. And then Dante Bichette, new to the American League, he takes a look at Pettit, and that nasty pitch dives down and in. And Pettit 
becomes one of the first pitchers ever, well, one of four, to defeat Pedro Martinez twice in the same season. He's 9-1 in his last 10 starts, 2-0, 15.2 innings pitched, and one earned run. He's been great. Jose Canseco had a two-run home run against Tim Wakefield yesterday. It makes him the first player to homer at Fenway for six different teams, and Derek Jeter continues to deal. He's reached base safely in 34 straight games, the second longest streak in the American League this year. Well, that's yesterday. Now the Yankees are looking for the sweep, and if they get the sweep, they'll be nine games up in the American League East, and that's a pretty good feeling when there are only 25 games left. Now the guys that are going to call the game, Ken Singleton and Jim Cott. Hey, guys. Hi, Michael. Thanks a lot. It is a beautiful day at Fenway Park, and what better day to make your debut? <laughs> You'll never forget your first at-bat. I'll never forget my first appearance. Randy Keesler makes his Major League debut today. It'll be a special day for him. Yeah, very special young man indeed. He had a great year, both at AA and AAA for the Yankees. Randy Keesler has a great breaking ball, has a good fastball as well. We're watching him warm up right here. There's some of the numbers on Keesler, but I think he doesn't seem nervous to me at all, Kitty. Well, he's hiding it because you, I guarantee he didn't sleep a lot last night. You see the numbers he's had at Columbus and Norwich, so he's had success in the minor leagues. He's the Yankees' top pitching prospect. And, uh, of course, he's got three good pitches like Andy Pettit, who had a great game yesterday. And speaking of Pettit's game, would not have been a win without the clutch performance of Scott Brocious. Scott Brocious has come up with some big home runs in his days with the Yankees. And let's go back to earlier this week in Kansas City. We're going to take a look at yesterday's three-run home run off of Pedro Martinez. Uh, my mistake, but this is a big home run in the seventh inning yesterday. Gave the Yankees the lead and the eventual win over Pedro Martinez. Now we look at Kansas City. This is on the fifth. Earlier this week, a grand slam home run broke the game open. Scott Brocious once again with a late game homer to keep the Yankees on top. An average series. In fact, for Scott, it's been an average year, but he always seems to get those big home runs late in the game. As Michael Kay said, the Yankees will try to sweep this three-game series here at Fenway Park and increase the lead to nine. Bernie Williams is back in the lineup for the first time in several games. And hey, in September with the expanded rosters, can't tell the players without a scorecard. Back after this. Get it for you going tight on two bucks on the app. When things get hot, nothing refreshes you like the frost brew taste of Coors Light. Rock Falls, Illinois. It's my town. Oh, there's Mike Downing. Watch. Watch. He'll wave with both hands. A lot of these folks, I'm their MetLife financial professional. We'll do 10% mutual funds and the rest will go to annuities. MetLife and farmers go way back. During the Depression, we got 7,000 farms up and working again. That's MetLife. I got a great job. I'm a part of these people's lives, and I don't have to sit behind a desk. You passed on that internet stock and that lakefront property. Well, now, during the Chrysler 2000 final clearance, make up for it with our biggest cash allowances of the year on new 2000 models. Choose up to a 3000 cash allowance on Chrysler minivans or choose a 1000 cash allowance plus less than 1% financing. That's 0.9 APR and 1000 cash. Hey, you passed on that chain of coffee houses, so get to the Chrysler 2000 final clearance only at your Chrysler dealer. Do your internal and external information systems talk to each other? I can, without any uh, problem whatsoever, tell you there are systems that cannot talk with one another. They, well, let me, let me start and start answering this question uh, all over again as I, I uh, rethink my answer. And, and, uh, ask me the question again, if you would. Ask about Sidebase Enterprise Portals. The information you need, when and where you need it. Sidebase, because you should know better. New York Yankees baseball is brought to you by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. By American Express. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, American Express helps you do more. By Jeep, the most award-winning brand of 4x4s on earth. And by The Wiz, your ticket to entertainment. 
What a day to be a baseball fan or a baseball player. A New England September day that is absolutely perfect. Here's the lineup that Pete Shurek will face. Brought to you by Coors Light. At the top, Chuck Knobloch. And then Derek Jeter in the two hole. Bernie Williams back in the lineup today. Hits third. Jose Canseco, David Justice, and Glenn Allen Hill in the middle. At the bottom third, Tino Martinez, Jorge Posada, and Scott Brocious, yesterday's hitting hero. Intelligent defensive lineup for the Boston Red Sox in the infield from third to first. Marloni, Garcia Parra, Sadler, and Offerman. In the outfield, O'Leary, Everett, and Lewis. Scott Hatterberg doing the catching. And the defense is brought to you by Intelligent, the official local and long distance provider of the New York Yankees. Lou Marloni at third base. He is the seventh player to start a game at third base for the Red Sox this year. They've had a problem ever since John Valentin went down with an injury. And Pete Scher except to face Chuck Knobloch, who back in the lineup and playing very well, playing exceptionally well in the field. And Scherk's first pitch in for strike. Kenny, it's been obvious that uh, Knobloch been out of the lineup. His bat is kind of shaky, but you're right. Defensively, he's been right on the money. And the hitting will come. Poked. Foul down the right field line. And the count is one and one. One of the things that I always felt pitching in Fenway Park, every mound is different, Kenny. And uh, it can look a little cockeyed right here. There, this is a rectangle of, of clay. The farther we get away from it, the more it will come into your picture. But actually, that points toward the left hand batter's box. It's a little bit cockeyed and if you use that as a sight line for a pitcher you're going to end up throwing the ball outside all day. So look at your catcher. And that's inside two and one. You mentioned Knobloch and you know the slow start with the bat coming back. You can appreciate that when you haven't played Major League Baseball for 30 days plus it's going to take a while for your timing to return. Off speed pitch three and one Shirk's first seven starts were very good since then he's been ineffective and at the end of the season he will probably have both elbow and shoulder surgery. There's the numbers. They're not pretty more than a hit per inning not a power pitcher. In the air shortstop Garcia par left fielder O'Leary and Nomar will fight the bright skies here in New England and put away one down. Knobloch continues to feel his way, but here's a player who's been on the money as far as swinging the bat uh, for quite a while now. Derek Jeter in his very comfortable number two spot has a 10 game hitting streak and a more impressive number of reaching base safely. 34 consecutive games now for Jeter reaching safely, whether it's a base hit or walk or being hit by a pitch in a game. First pitch low for a ball. We talk about teams peaking at the right time with the Yankees starting pitching. And now, if Knobloch gets on track with Jeter hitting the way he's capable of in the two spot. Outside 2 0. Oh, the, uh, the Yankees could very well, as ordinary a year as this appears to have been, end up with the best record in the American League. The White Sox have that, but they're hurting. James Baldwin is hurt right now. Their pitching is. Not been very effective lately. 3-0 to Jeter. Doc Gooden, little uh, little instant energy in case he's called on early. Of course, uh, Doc Gooden, if Randy Keesler has a short start, would be the logical candidate to come in early in the ballgame. Doc got a chance to, uh, unfortunately, come into the game that David Cohn was injured in Kansas City and pitched well enough to get the win. In for a strike three and one David Cohn for a medical update appears to be doing fine he has not thrown off the mound yet but he is playing catch no ill effects from the left shoulder. Ground foul and the count is full to Jeter. There is 24 year old Randy Kiesler. And the heart is pumping. <laughs> those early innings are so important you look down at those big league hitters and all you see is bubblegum cards you, you have a hard time realizing that you can actually throw a pitch down the middle and sometimes they'll make an out. I saw him in the clubhouse before the game and he was shadow pitching he had a baseball in his <laughs> hand. He was the only one in there. All the other Yankees were on the field. He's just following through with his motion. I'm, I'm sure this is something he's done many times before but not in the major leagues. Watched him warm up. He's got a very fluid 
rhythmic motion. Ground foul again and gets a piece of Willie Randolph down there in the third base coaching box. Look out, Willie. Get, now without your glove on. Well, that was his glove hand that took that shot. There's the season averages for Derek Jeter in the on base percentage up over 400. That's uh, as Kenny mentioned, he has reached base 34 straight games and has really drawn a lot of walks here in the last month to six weeks. So I, I think that's a key stat that's overlooked from time to time. The OBP, on base percentage, you get up over 40%, you're setting up the rest of the guys. Toward third, gobbled up by Merloni. And the chant of Lou in the background. Like Lou Pinella used to get at the stadium, and Lou Merloni throws out Jeter two way here in the Yankee first. There's a scouting report on Pete Scher. Chronic arm problems. Kenny mentioned the fact that he's going to have surgery at the end of the year. I, we were joking before the game. He probably hurt his arm signing his first contract. The bullpen's on call. He only goes about five, a little over five innings per game, and the sinker's his best pitch. If the Red Sox were not in the wild card race, and they're falling out faster day by day, three behind the Indians. Pete Shurik would probably shut it down for the year and have the surgery, but he uh, courageously says, uh, you know, they don't have a lot of other options. Here's Bernie for the first time in five games. Slaps it past Donnie Sadler. A little bit of a short arm effort by Sadler, and Bernie Williams welcome back to the lineup with a two-out single. Well, the first time Bernie was injured was back on August the 19th. He returned to play a few games, was injured again in Kansas City, swinging the bat in the first inning of the game. There's Sadler. Short armed it, ball back to the middle. I don't know if he would have gotten Bernie at first base, but welcome back, Bernie. Yeah, the swinging from the left side will not hurt that uh, right rib cage as much as it would as a left hand hitter. <laughs> and here's Conseco, always welcomed in, in every ballpark with a chorus of boos and the big home run in yesterday's game. Give the Yankees some insurance. Way inside, ball one. I think the former Red Sox players are the ones that get the most booze. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Clemens and the and there are a lot of them. Ginseco, yeah. Dan Duquette in our booth before uh, the game. You look at the players that he's acquired and gotten rid of. I mean, everybody just—it's like a revolving door coming through Boston. Inside again, two and zero. Oh. And unfortunately for Red Sox fans, the timing has not been good. They usually catch players. Either past their peak or injured, they seldom catch some of their uh, free agent players on the brink of having an outstanding year. Two and zero, oh. looped out into short right. That's going to drop for a hit. Bernie will make the turn and head for third, and the Yankees will have runners at the corners with two out here in the first. I was talking to Jose Canseco before the game. Now he had played for the Red Sox back in 96 and uh, 95. And he said one year he had about 25, 26 home runs before the All-Star break, then had to go out with back surgery on the DL. You can see that off the end of the bat flares and in the right field for a base hit. Says all you got to do here is a right-handed hitter with some power, stand up on top of the plate and try to pull the ball. And uh, well, he flares that in the right field for a base hit. And for years, that's why uh, it was an enjoyable place for left hand pitchers to pitch, contrary to a lot of public opinion. Because if you got a right hand hitter to hit it the other way, it was an out. But guys today are so much bigger and stronger, they shoot it over that 380 mark out in the Yankee bullpen. Here's a good matchup for the Yankees. Justice, one of the better left hand hitters against left hand pitching. Outside for a ball. Overall season numbers. David, 37 home runs and 106 RBIs. But you could make a strong case. There's what he's done this series, this road trip, and on the season. He's a third time reaching the century mark in ribbies. Outside, 2-0. Oh, you could... I'm not a believer in everyday players being more valuable than pitchers. Pedro Martinez is a good example of that. But you could make a case for this guy being about as valuable a, a Yankee as there has been during the year. And he's only been there a short time. See Jose Arfman not holding Canseco on at first base with Justice at the plate. In the old days, Canseco would have stolen second by now. Outside corner, two and one. And uh, we invite you to join us on our scorecard show Tuesday and Wednesday night. That's what David has done against Pete Shurick. Susan Waldman has 
It's an interesting uh, an interesting interview which we will play uh, part of Tuesday and part of Wednesday with David Justice. Yes, he did. It's two and two. It was so interesting. We had to do it over a two day period. Didn't yeah. it? Here's a look at the last pitch. Justice gets tied up. Pitch might have been a little inside, but uh, that pitch right there and lefties usually handle that pitch. But the Minnesota Twins shut down Justice in the 1991 World Series, and that's how they consistently pitched him down and in out of the strike zone. Now a little indecision in Hatterberg will make a trip to the mound to check with Shirk. Closed captioning on our telecast today as usual brought to you by the Wiz, your ticket to entertainment. A glorious New England September Sunday. Watching the Yankees and the Red Sox go at it here in the third game of the three game series. Ground foul and we'll do it again. Two balls, two strikes, and two out. Usually when they have a discussion, it's about location, not so much about the pitch, but it's just where they want to put it. Canseco with a bloop single is at first. Bernie Williams first time back in the lineup in five days. Got a ground single to right center. And they're the Yankee runners. Rounded out toward first. Offerman short hop to Shurik, and he found the bag in time. So Pete Shurik pitches out of the two out, two on situation. Yankees fail to score in the first, and now we'll get set for the major league debut of Randy Kiesler as he faces the Red Sox when we come back. look cool but 24 year old Randy Kiesler you know that heart is pumping and he's got to try to harness those emotions and not try to overthrow here in the first inning of his first major league start let's check out the Red Sox lineup brought to you by Coors Light and this lineup has had trouble scoring runs lately it's got Darren Lewis at the top Jose Offerman and Carl Everett then the middle third, Nomar Garcia Para, Dante Bichette, newly acquired DH, Troy O'Leary, Lou Merloni, Scott Hatterberg, and Donnie Sadler. Intelligent defensive lineup for the Yankees. It's Brocious, Jeter, Knobloch, and Martinez in the infield. Hill, Williams, and Justice in the outfield. Jorge Posada doing the catching for Randy Kiesler. Defense brought to you by Intelligent, the official local and long distance provider of the New York Yankees. And highlighted is. Ladies the Gold Glove center fielder, Bernie Sox Williams, Sox back in the lineup, ranging around center field, and certainly a welcome sight. And uh, how close did Bernie come to signing with the Red Sox as a free agent last year? Wow. And what difference would that have made? Oh, boy. The Red Sox just have not made, I mean, they have most of their money tied up in three players, Carl Everett, Nomar garcia Parra, and Pedro Martinez. So even with a $90 million payroll, uh, they're not making it to the... World Series. There's Randy Keesler's numbers. Very impressive. Uh, the bottom mark combined 14 and 5. He was 6 and 2 at Norwich and 8 and 3 at uh, at Columbus. He's 6'3, 190. Kind of what they'd call a sneaky fast fastball. And makes his major league debut. It's the third consecutive starter for the Yankees to come out of the state of Texas. Clemens Pettit and now Keesler. Drafted in 1998, and the Yankees will say he is their best pitching prospect. He's the one other teams talk about when trades come up. Kenny will give you the scouting report on him in just a moment. As he sets to face Darren Lewis, his first pitch in the major leagues. And it's high for a ball. 
the other day I had a chance to uh, driving out to the ballpark in Kansas City and uh, Randy needed a ride so I got a chance to talk to him uh, a little bit and pleasant young man from uh, Richards Texas. That's outside 2 and 0. Oh, the amazing thing is being from Texas how he got away from the University of Texas and went to LSU. There's a lot of competition down there but LSU of course a great baseball program particularly for pitchers. Way outside 3 and 0. Oh. That'll be the key. Try to slow it down. There's a scouting report on Keisha. A Pettit clone. You might uh, notice some of the same mannerisms that Andy Pettit has. Very good curve. And Jorge will be in charge today. He'll be the one uh, making the calls as to what to throw. Four pitch walk might be the best thing to happen to him. He's disappointed, but sometimes from the windup, you're a little over pumped. You overthrow the ball. Now you have to pitch from a set position where you might be a little more under control. So still looking for his first second. major league strike Number he'll face 30. Jose Offerman. The first base. You know, what's interesting about Jose Randy Keesler as well Offerman. is that uh, here's a young man who's had uh, Tommy John surgery. He's bounced back from that. Had that while he was in pitching at LSU. That's like a badge of honor before you ever get to be 22 <laughs> years old to have that surgery. Five in a row now high for a ball. Slow it down. I'm sure that's what you mentioned Jorge in charge. It's you, you like to see a pitcher work with a nice pace but sometimes you can rush things a bit too much. That's in for a strike one and one. Sneaky fast good curve and uh, Lee Mazzilli who managed Keesler last year said he will throw his change up at any time. That looked like it. Yeah, right there. That, that's a good call by Posada when you're. When you're pumped up, your first start, you think you can throw the ball 110 miles an hour. Just take a little off. Back off, and uh, you can see that Offerman's way out in front, well placed, two down and away. Jorge in charge. <laughs> One and two to Offerman. Might be time for a breaking ball here. Fastball just a bit low, two and two. Talking with some of the scouts that are here prior to the game. Sal Butera scouting for the Blue Jays. Dom Cheedy for the Indians talking about how pitchers who throw it slower and lower when they get in trouble are more successful. Bit of an awkward move there to first base and Lewis not going anywhere. But well he doesn't have the uh, Andy Pettit move and you know that Tommy Harper the first base coach who was a great base dealer in his days watching uh, young Mr. Kiesler very closely. Full count. In fact, Harper was the first infielder to go 30 30, 30 home runs and 30 steals in one season. Was, uh, well, he'll forever have the Seattle Pilots yeah. stolen base record because they don't exist anymore. I think it was 73 or 74 <laughs> stolen bases. Another walk. Trying to get him with the off speed pitch and a shaky start for young Randy Kiesler. A pair of walks here to start off the Boston first. Gino Martinez in there. You see that little shoulder Number shrug. Two. Hey, just try to throw it this over. We'll make the other. plays. You see how he's chewing that gum. That tells you how over pumped, over amped he is right now. Carl Everett, most productive Red Sox hitter, steps in. Two on, nobody out. The Jeter now uh, mentioned uh, motioning to uh, Keesler. If there's a ground ball back to him, look for Knobloch to cover second. I think everybody's going to have to school him through these first three innings. Let him, you know, map it out for him as to what uh, they want him to do. Certain situations. That wide open stance of Everett. First pitch swinging on a breaking ball, strike one. Everett probably saying, "Well, kid's going to throw me a fastball," and he swung like it. Looked like a, yeah, the changeup. So far, what did you say? Throw it any time in the camp. That's the uh, word on Randy Keesler. Excellent change. Runners on the go. Posada's throw. Oh, big break for the Yankees. Posada guns down Darren Lewis. First out in the. And what a nice break for Randy Keesler and the Yankees with their most productive hitter in the batter's box. Pitch is just inside, and Posada steps. Watch it. You see him step around Everett, and then the, what is that throw there waiting for Lewis? 
Looked like he had a decent jump. That doesn't look so decent. He's out of there easily. Way inside. And it's two and one to ever. Yeah, when you've got a young pitcher on the rope, that kind of surprises me. When you have a young pitcher on the ropes and your most productive hitter in the batter's box, you you know why do him a favor? And that's what the Red Sox did. Two and two again, another changeup. And I think uh, if Posada, and that's what catchers will do. Good catchers will look at hitters where they stand and how they approach. The way he is lunging at that changeup, he might get one lower and slower. Another point of the Red Sox running there. Why don't you just let him walk the bases loaded? I mean, really? he, hadn't, he hadn't gotten anybody out yet. Yeah, that was a huge favor. Rip and pull foul. Yeah, just a couple of outs to kind of get your sea legs. That's what Keesler's hoping for, whether they're thrown out stealing or line drives at people. Anything to get through those first couple of innings. Everett, of course, with the one of the most unusual stances. <laughs> Popped up. Playable on the infield for Jeter. Two away. And now Randy Keesler, after not being able to find the strike zone, gets a huge break from the Red Sox running game. Pops up Everett. And he can see his way out of his first inning if he can get out Garcia Parra. Kitty, you mentioned that the uh, Red Sox are, haven't been hitting, and uh, one of the keys to their success is Nomar Garcia Parra, and he hasn't been swinging the bat well lately either. Yeah, not Nomar like numbers. The average is up there, but uh, 18 home runs and 79 RBIs. He's hitting only 204 this month. Eye for a ball. Red Sox, one of five teams averaging fewer than five runs a game. And in the American League, that's not good. In the uh, DH League, you usually score six or seven these days. 2 0. Oh. So, Kitty, I, I think his fastball is fine. He just can't locate it. He's, right. he's got uh, pretty good zip on it. Just right now, it's not going where he wants to. I'm sure he's pitching in double time. He's going so much faster than he would really like to go. Hit well toward the monster. Hill will play it off the wall and get it into second. And Garcia Parra with a two out single gives the Red Sox a one nothing lead. Now for Nomar, this will be his 80th run batted in of the year, and you can see he turns on it and rips it to the wall. Just another dent in the wall at, at the monster. As Glenn Allen Hill plays it well and gets it back in. Fenway Park single. It's more like a double, maybe a home run in other places. And now the Colorado hit man, Dante Bichette. That's his numbers as a member of the Red Sox. And Recently acquired as their designated hitter. Low for a ball. And the numbers, I'm sure scouts and general managers take this into consideration. When you come out of Coors Field, those numbers don't always translate into being successful in other ballparks. At sea level. <laughs> yeah. 2-0. As much as you like to see pitchers work with a good patient, you would almost like to see Keesler they'll walk around the month just to kind of slow things down a little bit. A few deep breaths. Three and oh. Mel's gonna have a little trip to the mound that'll slow him down some while he walks out to the uh, mound on this beautiful September day we'll identify our umpire lineup brought to you by click and settle .com. settle your legal disputes online before your expenses get out of line the Dean the King Bruce Fremming is behind the plate and the rest of his crew Bill Welke Cubby Culberth and 
Mike Winters. Bruce Freming, I think one of the uh, most consistent umpires has been around baseball for a long time. We they pointed out as Mel is having that animated conversation with Keesler. The way he shrugs his shoulders, it's almost like, hey, the worst thing can happen. The guy hits a three-run homer, and the uh, Yankees will probably score six anyway, so don't worry about <laughs> it. Or a two-run homer. So everybody's trying to do their part in getting Randy Keesler to relax and see if he can throw it over. He's thrown 23 pitches, and only eight of them have found the strike zone. Three and one. Well, from Bouchette's standpoint, he's looking to do the same thing that Garcia Parra did, but only maybe a little higher. Center field, Bernie Williams on the run at the track is going to put it away. And Keesler hustles off the mound as. That's over with. <laughs> he escaped, allowing just one run. We head to the top of the second. Yankees trail by one. Welcome back to Fenway Park. That's different. If you look at Randy Keesler's left forearm, he came in and he applied some kind of a magical cream to that elbow. I guess that's a result of the surgery, and I'm, I'm thinking maybe it's strike cream that he's put on there. <laughs> he escaped the first inning. One run, a couple of walks, and a hit, and he uh, right in for that. Look at Mel looking at it. Yeah. What's this? Well, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of uh, ointments that analgesic bomb. Uh, they've got capsule in it that'll make the arm warm and uh, maybe uses that instead of putting a jacket on. Maybe that's a left-handed move. Yeah, yeah, it probably is. They have a few different ones. Those lefties. <laughs> Shirk to Glen Allen Hill. First pitch. Shirk picks it off of a high hop and throws out Hill one away in the Yankees second. Time for our Marriott Marquee matchup, and today it's a look at both teams, not necessarily the pitchers, but the season series. Marriott Marquee, Broadway's biggest hit. Yankees lead the series 6-5. They have out hit the Red Sox slightly, but that gives you an idea how deceptive batting average is. They've outscored them almost 2-1. to one. Home runs almost 4-1, to one, and much better pitching. So even though they're... Yankees only lead the Red Sox by one game. They uh, statistically are really dominating. That's low for a ball. That's the Pedro Martinez factor. Yeah, that's one of them. And one of the games that the Yankees won, the score was 22 to 1. So they, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that'll <laughs> skew the numbers a bit inside 2 and 0. Oh. Tino over the 80 RBI mark now with a late rush could uh, could still get to. 100 RBIs, which for him has been a very mediocre season. 3 0. To his credit, it has not affected his, his fielding. He is backing up last year's uh, what should have been a gold glove year with another one just like it. 
in for a strike three and one. I think the only trouble for Tino winning that award this year is the fact that uh, Rafael Palmero is playing a bit more in the field this year. Last year was kind of a well, kind of a joke if you ask me. Nice play by Merloni to his feet. Well, Maloney, one of the favorites around here, he's from nearby Framingham, Massachusetts, which is about a short dive from Fenway Park. Maybe a little further than that one, but there, here's the play across the diamond. Excellent play by the Red Sox third baseman. We mentioned the Red Sox have had seven different players start a game at third this year, and it started with John Valentin, and when he went down with that season-ending knee injury, it, then the parade started. Took a hit away from Tino on that great play. Here's Posada. Outside corner strike one. It's amazing how some organizations, uh, and I think of the Mets, third baseman for years. I mean, Don Zimmer was their first, I believe, or Rod Caneo maybe, and they, they have just gone through dozens of third basemen. They've got a good one now, though. Yep. Ouch. Nicked him. Nicked him on the forearm. And Posada will reach base. I don't know. You have to ask Jorge if this is a nick or not. This, the pitchers try to underestimate everything. That that hurt. <laughs> that hurts me to look at it. Right in the uh, right elbow there. I think one of the reasons we see hitters wearing the protective gear and getting hit by pitchers like I have a feeling when you hit, you learn to keep your hands back and out of the way. I, I, my head too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now with hitters diving into the ball, and when you dive, your your arms go with it, and they're much more exposed. That's outside for a ball, and we that's why we see the protective armor that hitters are wearing, and we see a lot more. I think of Jeff Bagwell, who I think has been hit in the wrist, you know, numerous times. He wears one of those gloves now with a Velcro device on it, protects the back of his hand. Brocious uh, last. Yesterday afternoon's hitting hero, the three-round homer off Pedro Martinez, has a 2-0 count here with two out in the second. Posada with a modest lead at first. In for a strike, two and one. Ironically, Kenny, the guy who had been hit so often, Don Baylor, who wore no protection at all, is the one that invented that particular protective uh, device for the wrist. Came up with it for Andres Galarraga. Three and one to Brocious. I think Yankee fans will find it interesting that Brocious, in every game that he's played here for the Yankees, all 18 of them, he's reached base safely. And I think he's got a perfect stroke for this park. If you go away from him, he'll hit the ball to right center field. If you make a mistake, leave something soft in the middle of the plate like Pedro did yesterday, he'll pull it and go for the wall. Like that to left. Is it high enough? Yes, into the net. Two run homer, and Scott Brocious again has given the Yankees the lead. It's two to one. And plus the fact when you fall behind him on the cap, you know, he can look in a certain area. I mentioned the fact that he's a good fastball hitter. What I mean by that is that when Number he gets himself 11. in a fastball count, he'll hit it. Now, this year hasn't been the best year for Brocious, but remember, he seems to do some of his best playing in September and October. Now block, first pitch swinging foul. Another look at it. Here's the target right there. Now, let's see where the pitch actually is. Wow. A little more toward the middle of the plate. It was just a question of whether it was high enough. It was hard enough. And it definitely had the height. Low for a ball, one and one to Nabla. Like one of Venus Williams' top spin forehands there. Yeah. Had that top spin action and just got into the net. <laughs> Off speed pitch in, one and two to Nabla. You mentioned Brocious and his great September hitting, and that's. What the Yankees appear to be doing here is as a, a complete team, they are peaking in September. Outside corner called strike three. Shurek surrenders the two-run homer to Brocious. 
And Randy Kiesler, after a shaky first, will take the mound with a one-run lead. Back after this. with the freedom of America's best warranty plan. So for the next 10 years, instead of worrying about your car, worry about other things, like the SPF of your sunscreen. The Sonata, from Hyundai. Is better. Hurry in and get the Sonata with 0.9% APR financing now. Beautiful look at the pesky pole at Fenway Park. Yankee baseball brought to you in part by Aflac. Without it, no insurance is complete. And by Hertz, the world's number one car rental. What a day. Make your major league debut, and we'll see if Randy Kiesler can get it on track a little bit in front of his parents and sisters and fiance and uh, the whole crews there. Yeah, Michael Kay informed us on the uh, pregame show that. <laughs> But his sisters are Candy, Sandy, and Mandy. And brother Randy, he's a dandy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a dandy. And of course, his, uh, he said his dad's here, Dean, and his uh, mom and his stepmom, Nancy and Diane, are here, too. All the way from Richards, Texas. That's where Randy was born and raised. Troy O'Leary. Set to face Troy O'Leary, who is at a subpar season for the Red Sox. Low for a ball. Still looking for that first pitch strike. Something to build on. That's in for a strike. One and one. O'Leary's uh, season punctuated by a trip to the disabled list because of personal problems. It Seem to have been ironed out. Back to back strikes one and two. Good fastball. We haven't seen a curveball yet. I, I'm you know, riding in the car the other day. He said, "I've got a good curve, and I, I want to see it." You yeah. know. I think Posada is saying we we need to get the fastball over first. There's a curve, and it's off the glove of Jeter out into center field for. A base hit. Garrett got leather on it. One of those sinking liners he couldn't quite haul in, and O'Leary has a leadoff single. And I wonder if that fool Jeter, usually when he gets leather on something, he can, certainly he can jump high enough to pull down anything. Looked like it got on him too quickly. Maybe he didn't see it uh, coming out of the darkness behind it, home plate there. Darkness into the light. Jeter with the late reaction off the glove and in the center for the hit. You're right. He couldn't quite time the leap. All right, there's the curveball you were talking about, our first look at it. And here's Lou Merloni, the local fan favorite. There's a first pitch strike. I think Posada would like to see Kiesler, and rightly so, establish that fastball that he can throw that over and then go to some of the other pitches. 0-2. Oh, Good change up. Change up's a bit. The change up is a little easier to pitch to, to throw off the fastball. The curveball, a lot more touch and feel. And when you're pumped up like Kiesler is, that's going to be the most difficult one to control. I know what he's thinking now. They've given me the lead. I don't want to give it back. Yeah. Got him. Three pitch strikeout. Randy Kiesler has his first major league strikeout. 
Lou Merloni down on strikes. Uh, and he gets it with the change of it. It's not the heater or the curve, it's the change. You see how far out in front Merloni is trying to keep up with it. Number 10. Yeah, that will go on the scorecard. Scott He's nervous. Heart's beating. <laughs> <laughs> well, check it just to make sure. <laughs> Here's Scott Atterberg, the Red Sox catcher. Outside for a ball. Actually, as, uh, as shaky as Randy has appeared, the uh, first inning and the third. The, uh, the parents in the family rooting section are much more nervous than he is, and that's always the case. They can't do anything about it. He can. One and one, or rather two and oh. Mentioned Bruce Freming, the home plate umpire, longtime veteran, well respected. Still one of the few umpires that will stand right behind the catcher and give you a good, honest look at every pitch. Toward first, Tino. Fair ball, there's one. And he gets out of it with an inning ending double play. Big improvement over the first. Two in the books at Fenway Park, and Randy Keesler and the Yankees own a 2 1 lead. Boston Red Sox and star 93-7. The rhythm of Boston would like your help in choosing yep. our big hit of the inning. He will now be given a choice. Well, quite an end to the first, or rather the second inning for Randy Keesler, who had trouble throwing strikes in the first inning, but comes back with a strikeout of Lou Merloni and then gets Scott Hatterberg. You know, it's interesting to, to watch you know, parents in the stands, and of course you can understand where a mom would be all pumped up for her debut of her son in the major leagues. But I think of what David Cohn told me the other day when he was injured in Kansas City. It's the first time his mom had ever been in a major league locker room. And to see her son in such great pain. And he gets Keesler's mom sitting up there. And she's got a lot of the same feelings pent up about her son. Of course, you know, he's making his debut. But you can see how nervous she is. And you can see in the dugout how Don Zimmer, after two innings, now is offering a little counsel to Keesler. And when Zim speaks, people listen, even though, you know, Zim isn't a pitching coach, but that's probably just some good inside baseball talk that could be helpful to Randy Kiesler. You know, Kitty, of course, says, you know, my mom used to go to ball games. I'm sure yours did, and years gone by. And I, I can remember going to attract me my brother used to run track and he was running at madison square garden and i went and sat with my mom while my brother was running his uh, event brother fred yeah and i mean she was all pumped up and yelling yeah. and punching me and all this <laughs> my brother was running and i'm thinking are you like this at ball games that i'm playing <laughs> well they can't do anything about it now he went from the cream to the sleeve instead of a jacket he's got a sleeve over that uh, left elbow to keep it warm the shortstop Derek Jeter. Big difference in the number of pitches. 25 pitches in the first inning for Kiesler. In the second inning, 11. All-speed curveballs in there for a strike from Derek. Uh, to Derek from uh, Pete Shurek. Gita grounded out the third his first time up. Another off-speed breaking ball found at the plate. The count is quickly 0-2 on Derek Jeter. You mentioned now, sure, Kenny goes about 5-5 five, five and a third because of the elbow and shoulder injury. And one thing that's really hurt this Red Sox team in recent weeks, the injuries to Pachardo and Richard Garces. Their bullpen in September is when you really need it. It's pretty thin right now. And plus the horrific injury to uh, Bryce Flora mm. the other night, hit by the line drive by Ryan Thompson. So the Red Sox bullpen is depleted at this point of the season when they might really need it the most. Jeter's up there with a count of 0 and 2. Fastball off the outside corner, a teaser. The count goes to the ball and two strikes. Jeter, of course, uh, 7 for 21 on this road trip. Having a pretty good trip with the bat. 
10 game hitting streak. Trying to increase it to 11. Swung on a liner down the right field line. It's going to be a tough play. It goes foul to the seeds. Darren Lewis cannot get to it. Of course, this is one of those balls. This is the only ballpark that I can think of where the right fielder plays deeper than the foul pole. Yeah, and, and a fan actually can reach into the field to play and almost get a glove on a fair ball down there near the pesky pole. Yep. You know, the outfielder's playing about, what, 320, and the line is 309 or somewhere about that. You can see that he is a little further back than the foul pole itself. Count remains, the ball and two strikes on Judith. Swings, fouls another pitch back. The count holds. He'll be followed by Bernie Williams and Jose Canseco here at the top of the third. Yankees two, the Red Sox one. Yankees going for the sweep. Bernie back in the lineup for the first time, had a hit his first time up. Bernie missed five games. Off speed pitch hit high in the air to deep center field. Going back is Everett. He looks up and it's off the wall. Cheaters headed to third. This might be a race for the plate. Garcia Parra has the relay, and Jeter's in with a stand-up triple. With nobody out, you don't send him. So Jeter picks up a three-base hit as Everett comes up short with the attempt to grab it. The high sky on a fall wag day in New England. It is so difficult to pick up the ball. You see, Everett was back there. He leaped. He, he had a chance to get leather out of it. And Derek Jeter, to his credit, as soon as he saw that go up, begins to pick up a little steam. He knows he's got at least a triple. So Jeter in at third with his fourth triple of the season. And that'll bring up Bernie Williams who singled his first time. The Red Sox who can play the infield in at the corners. Shortstop and second baseman are back. Fastball over the inside corner for a call strike. So a leadoff triple by Jeter gets the Yankees in business. They got a two run homer last inning from Scott Brocious to erase a one nothing deficit. Bernie swings, ground ball to the right side. Here comes the throw to the plate. Jeter is in there safely. The throw was a little high, and Jeter got underneath. And we're going to have an argument at the plate. Here comes Jimmy Williams as Hatterberg does not agree with Bruce Fleming. Bruce Fleming did not hesitate one iota. I mean, as soon as Jeter slid, he put the safe sign out, and he is very quickly and emphatically telling Williams not he got the foot down ahead of the tag. Kind of surprised that uh, that Offerman who had to go to his you see the off balance throw it pulls Hatterberg up the line he has to reach and here's what Bruce Fremming was looking at before the tag was applied. Before the tag was applied Hatterberg has to go up from that direction and when he reaches down he did not make contact with Jeter before Der in fact Derek looking up at the umpires calling himself safe even though the ball was there the front leg got in ahead of the tag helps to have speed get a good walking lead off the third and he scored on the play and the Yankees now have a three to one lead still nobody out Bernie Williams safe on the field his choice and Canseco at the plate takes a breaking ball outside ball one. Another look, the off balance throw, Hatterberg reaches. You see Derek kind of a little fadeaway slide. Now, right there, the left foot touches home plate, and Hatterberg has not made contact with him yet. He finally tagged Derek on the hand. It was too late. Can Seiko flared his single to right center field his first time up? That's high for a ball. I just been talking to Jose before the game. I asked him. Uh, you know, what if he played his whole career here, had remained healthy? <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking scary numbers as yep. far as home run totals are concerned. Perfect stroke for it. Had a home run here yesterday. Gave the Yankees some insurance in the ninth inning. Third ball. That's called a strike. Again, another look from ground level. And you'll see when Derek slides, you'll see... 
The left hand come up in the air, and that's what Hatterberg eventually tags. But by that time, Derek had already made contact with the plate. Two and one on Penseco. That's called a strike, and it's two and two. Jose backing off. When you stand as close to the plate as Jose does, pitchers try and jam him, and in a way, he's a lot like Frank Thomas used to be. Tries to make it for the umpire, make that pitch appear to be a ball and inside. Yeah, he can get hit with pitches that are almost strikes. In fact, he swung at one last week at Yankee Stadium, got hit with the pitch. Toss over the first to check on Bernie Williams. The Yankees going for the sweep here in Boston. They play the Red Sox again tomorrow night at the stadium. That's a six o'clock start in the Bronx. A makeup of an earlier season uh, rainout. Another toss to first. This time Bernie dives back safely. Throwing back to that play again where Derek Jeter slides. Hatterberg reaches down to apply the tag and you see Bruce Freming immediately on the play points to the plate and says he touched the plate before you made the tag. Two and two on Kenseiko. Another throw to first. Kind of doubt that Bernie's going anywhere. Continental Airlines batting leaders, most home runs, active players here at Fenway Park. Mo Vaughn, as you might expect, 119. John Valentin, Garcia Parra, and O'Leary, and Canseco, and Ellis Burks with 48. Curveball is in there, call strike three. Canseco's out of there. There's the first out of the inning. Actually, what, what struck Canseco out was not the pitch as much as the delivery. You see, he barely had his bat back. What sure did is he Number went to the slide step. And Jose has that little hitch in his swing. He never got a chance to get the bat ready. Watch the slide step. He's going to quick come there. Now the bat goes back. No way he's ready to swing the bat on that breaking ball. One of those left-hander tricks. <laughs> Pete Shurek. Here's David Justice. We're going to miss on a sweeping breaking ball. Justice grounded out the first baseman for the pitcher covering. That ended the first inning for the Yankees. They left a couple aboard. Something that Justice has not been doing much of. Another throw to first. You know, the Red Sox are about as down as they've been. The Yankees just the opposite. You've been on teams before where you've won the first two games. You come in the clubhouse and the, the battle cry is kick them early and often. But because if you get a team like this down early, then they can very easily go to sleep. Another swing and a miss by Justice and it's only two. The Red Sox have a very tough schedule this month. We, we mentioned the fact that the Yankees are playing 31 days in a row to close out the season. The Red Sox have double headers thrown in there. In fact, back to back double headers against the Cleveland Indians, the team that they're fighting uh, for with a wild card situation. Cleveland currently leads the wild card. And Cleveland's been hot. Robbie Alomar is playing like he's not going to play another game. Eight games in 11 days after the Red Sox finish with the Yankees tomorrow against the Indians. Up and in and Justice was leaning out over the plate to protect that outside corner had to reverse the engines quickly. There's an example of a hitter kind of diving in and anticipating as Kenny mentioned Justice had to sit down in a hurry to get away of the uh, up and in pitch. Another fastball in on the hands and lifted in the air to center field for Everett fighting the sun. You see the glare of the glasses it makes the catch. Bernie Williams scammers back to first. That's just an indication of what it might be like for the outfielders today. Eventually that gets around to right field. Well, you you played the outfield and you know when it maybe you can tell fans when it gets to September 
You know, when the, when the, the, the skies are a little brighter, the sun, I guess, is a little bit lower, and it becomes much more difficult. I think back to the days when Willie Davis dropped all those fly balls in Baltimore in the 1966 World Series. I mean, there's not a cloud up there. That's what you outfielders call a high sky. And uh, the clouds, you, you get a reading on the baseball when it's up there. You can, you know, something to play off of up there. There's just one scene up there today. So instead of looking like a... A basketball on a day like today, the ball probably looks like a Tiger Woods wedge shot or something. <laughs> and you're the target. Glenn Allen Hill grounded out to Shurik. That is uh, inside. Of course, Glenn Allen had the great month of August, American League Player of the Month. First at bat as a Yankee, hit a home run in Baltimore. Ground ball is short. Garcia Parra will flip to Sadler for the fourth on Bernie Williams. And the Yankees are done here in the top of the third, but they do pick up a run at the end of two and a half. The Yankees lead Pete Short and the Red Sox three to one. Labor ready, dependable temporary labor. Personalities of NASA and Paradise Island. Save up to $150 with your American Express card and $60 on select airlines. Call your local travel agent. Things look different when you come out to the stadium. Come see for yourself. The New York Yankees, 25-time world champions of baseball. Catch all the action as the Yankees take on the Toronto Blue Jays for an exciting three-game series September 12th through the 14th. Call Ticketmaster at 212-307-1212 or get tickets on the web at Yankees.com. Get your tickets now. 3-1 Yankees, bottom of the third inning here at the beautiful day in Boston's Fenway Park. Of course, these teams will play again tomorrow. And uh, this is a, a makeup game from June the 12th. If you have your rain check uh, from that day, those tickets will be uh, accepted tomorrow. Game starts at 6 o'clock. Of course, there you can buy a ticket to the game if you want. You don't need the rain check alone. Tickets available at the regular ticket outlets. Ticketmaster 212 307 7171. And as always, on the web, www.yankees.com. Yankees and the Red Sox tomorrow. Remember, that's a 6 p.m. start. That'll be a uh, Wego de Cubano. Oh, yeah. Rolando Arojo and El Duque. Two of the, uh, the Cuban defectors will hook up in that game. I think they've matched up one other time, Kitty, if I remember correctly, when uh, Rojo was with the uh, Tampa Bay Devil Rays, and El Duque won the game at the stadium. Here is Donnie Sadler. Nickname is the Dude. <laughs> Kiesler with a high fastball misses for ball one. So the dude with the sunglasses yeah. on. <laughs> Usually you have to, you know, hit like 350 and get a few years in before you get a nickname like the dude. <laughs> Ground ball towards third, backhanded by Brochus on the grass across the diamond, and Sadler is out. Scott Broch is playing up close, guarding against the bunts. Fadler has all kinds of speed. And Broch just throws him out. Randy Keesler, that out there helps him move into that, that territory. Pitcher goes through a few phases, particularly in your debut. You don't want to embarrass yourself. You, know, you get right knocked fielder. out in the first. That's embarrassing. So you get through Lewis. the first two. You got a lead. You've recorded a few outs. And now you kind of, yeah, you take a deep breath and say, well, maybe I do belong here. Now you think about winning the game. First inning, he's got the uh, leadoff man out. Aaron Lewis takes a call strike. First inning, Lewis walked against Keesler. And in the second inning, O'Leary got a base hit. So uh, they say the key to any inning for pitchers is to get that first guy out. Get that leading lady. Lewis fouls one back out of play, and it's 0 2. Keesler ahead on the count.
Lewis hitting at 242 earlier this year. He was up around the 300 mark, and uh, he's not a career 300 hitter, so you kind of seep him back to your regular level of hitting. Swings at a changeup and fouls it back. In fact, Jim Rice, the hitting coach, is, says he's taken all, a lot of heat lately because the Red Sox aren't hitting. He says, well, maybe early in the year we're hitting a little better than we should have. And now the guys are at one time. It seems that the Red Sox are all stopped hitting at once. Well, they had some lineup when he was in his prime, yeah, one through nine. It was a, guys like Butch Hobson hitting ninth. Different sort of team. Ball has popped up. Scott Brocious. Will he cross over in the foul territory? Yes, he does, and it's a pop out. Uh, Darren Lewis, two down. Well, middle of the order in this series, two, three, four, and five hitters for the Boston Red Sox. That's until today. They are four for 31. Yeah, as much as they're, you know, other than Pedro, they just don't have a solid rotation. But that is what's really hurt them. The uh, the days the other guys pitched, the Red Sox have not scored a lot of runs. Here's Jose Offerman. And Keesler misses inside for ball one. Hoffman drew a walk and scored the Red Sox run in the first inning. Fastball trying to pitch him inside and it's ball two. Another thing that's hurt the Red Sox this year, Hoffman uh, as a leadoff hitter, he's not leading off today, had some speed at the top of the order. Here's a strike, but he's been injured. He's had a bad knee all year long. He's gone from 18 stolen bases last year down to zero this year. Two years ago, Offerman stole 45 bases for Kansas City. Outside on a changeup, and the count is three and one. Still goes back to, I was kidding Dan Duquette about you want to borrow Kevin Brown for three weeks. In the Dodgers days, it was Colfax, Drysdale, and many others. Colfax had a little protection with Drysdale. Pedro doesn't have that. Off midline drive by Jeter. It's going to be in the left field for a base hit. A two out single. By Jose Offerman will bring the tying run to the plate in the person of Carl Everett. So Offerman picks on the 3 1 pitch. Behind in the count, expects Number fastball, two. gets it, the middle of the plate fielder. in, and drives it to Carl left Everett. field for a two out single. I think one thing that Randy Keesler will find when he gets himself behind in counts and he has to come in, big league hitters do not miss it. Now well, that changed for Everett. <laughs> now tell me you never you didn't do this. No, did you? never once in my career would I bat left-handed against a left-handed wow. pitcher. Uh, that changeup fooled him the first time. He's going to turn around and hit lefty. This is not the first time that Everett's done this. Now curveball. You have to <laughs> deal, you see, <laughs> You're not going to see that changeup anymore. This is what you have to deal with. I mean, you take your chance. Now you got a breaking ball going away. Everett, right on top of the plate, you can see how different his stance is left-handed than right-handed. Ball is drilled. And yeah, this is foul. So the, the thinking being, I guess, and I know Pete Rose did it against Randy Jones, is you guard against looking foolish on the changeup. But like you say, the curve can neutralize you anyway. <laughs> Maybe he's trying to make Keesler think it's a different hitter at the plate. Changeup's up high. Still through it. One and two. I think if I was... Uh, Posada right now and Everett, I'd sure be thinking curveball right now. You just don't see that many as a switch hitter or any. Throw the fastball upstairs, he might swing at it. Now let's throw the first instead. Hoffman without a steal. That right knee has been bothering him all season long. Everett behind on the count, a ball and two strikes. Ball is hit in the air to left field. Glenn Allen Hill coming on and makes the catch. Well, quite a route for Glenn Allen Hill and <laughs> Randy Keesler's mom celebrates yet another three out inning for her son. <laughs> Connect to the Wiz. Get a Sony 53-inch projection TV on sale for $19.99.99. The hottest, the latest, it's at the Wiz.
People are talking about Franzoso contracting, and what they're saying isn't good. It's great. Everything was done as promised, and um, that we were just so pleased with, uh, you know, the work that went into the home. I'm very happy with the work he's done. His men have been very, very good. It's really been wonderful. Franzoso Contracting, where we specialize in seamless siding, custom roofs, and innovative renovations. Franzoso Contracting, we want to help you build a better future. The PGA Tour is back. Don't miss the grace, passion, competition, and drama as today's stars become tomorrow's legends on the world's toughest courses. PGA Tour 2000 on ESPN and ESPN2. The PGA Tour, brought to you in part locally by Curlin's Cadillac, Nanuet, New York. It's Broadway's longest running musical review ever on Media One. Nominated for seven Tony Awards, including Best Musical. Broadway's smash hit is coming to pay-per-view television. Smokey Joe's Cafe is in demand with a star-studded pre-show live from Broadway one night only. On Broadway! Smokey Joe's Cafe September 10th is in demand on Media One. That's exactly right. In fact, one of the, his Yankee teammates mentioned that when he makes a catch, it's more like he tackles the baseball. <laughs> as long as he gets it, I don't think they care how he gets it. Here's Tito Martinez, and he swings at the first pitch and lines it in the right field for a base hit. So the Yankees, who have had at least one hit in every inning against Pete Shurik, continue that trend with Tino's leadoff single here in the fourth. And Shurik been fighting injuries all season, had a terrific game his last outing against uh, Oakland. 20, the catcher. But he's not as sharp today. That was his first start since July the 20th. Coming off the disabled list. And here's a guy who knows he's going to have surgery at the end of the year. This is very similar to what Brett Saberhagen did last year. They need him and he's got that kind of mentality. He'll try and get through it. Posada's to the plate and the first pitch is low and in the dirt scooped out by Hattieberg and it's ball one. Posada was hit by a pitch and then rode around the bases on the two run homer by Brochers who will follow him to the plate. Susan you can only imagine the uh, emotions that Randy Keesler's going through. You can see his mom out. She's all pent uh, up. It's great. We were talking to Randy the day he got here, and uh, the, the great thing is that when he heard all the trades, when he was supposed to go to trade, he said he'd go home, when the hotel, wherever they were, and he'd go, please, please, don't let them trade me. Don't let them trade me. <laughs> that pitch is high to Posada. Before the game, I was talking to uh, Stump Merrill, of course, uh, who uh, has seen him a lot, and Lee Mazzilli coached him last year at Norwich and Stump was saying if he can just keep the fastball down and not get it up he's going to be fine. Here's a pitch for a strike to Posada. You know it's interesting because uh, you, you got to be nervous. You know, I remember my first at bat my knees were knocking. I, I was so scared. Before the game you should have seen him Ken, in, the, in the locker room and he's measuring the shoelaces on the shoes. I mean, this is great stuff. <laughs> Well, the Yankees here, they have one on, nobody out. We're in the fourth inning. The Yankees lead it 3-1 to one on the Red Sox. Trying to make it a three-game sweep. Posada swings and pops it in the air to right field. Going back is Sadler. Coming on is Lewis, and it's going to be the right fielder who makes the catch as Sadler gives way. Darren Lewis has played uh, center field mostly for the Red Sox since he was here with the advent of Carl Everett. He moved to right. Now here's the Aflac trivia question. Which active player has homered the most on his birthday? Mm. All right. 18, the third baseman. He's in the house, Scott I'm being told. Brookes. Is this an Eddie Caginelli uh, special here? It's probably Eddie or <laughs> Leon or Bill Webb or <laughs> Webby's not into trivia. Forget Bill Webb. <laughs> here's Scott Brocious. Booed by the Fenway Faithful as he comes to the plate. And the first pitch of the curve in for a strike. Brocious with a two run homer in the second. Of course, a big three-run homer in the seventh yesterday. And actually, we we're looking at some stats right before Brocious hit that homer yesterday off of Pedro. And I remember turning to one of the guys from the Daily News and saying, you know, he hits 298 off of Pedro. Not bad. Toss over the first. Now, with that home run, 
Brocious has now hit four home runs and has 18 runs batted in in 19 games played for the Yankees here at Fenway Park. So there's just certain parks you feel, you know, I used to like Yosemite. That was one of my <laughs> <laughs> you like this one too, if I remember correctly. It's a good hitter's park. Curveball in for a strike. There's his home run today, almost in the same place, right up on that screen. That's our Corona extra effort so far. Extra effort put the Yankees ahead in the second inning. They've increased it to three to one now. Brocious hits one in the short right field. Sadler's going back. This time the second baseman will make the play. Tito Martinez gets back to first base and they're two down. And you can see uh, Sadler was fighting off the, the sun as we take a look at Jeff Fasaro. Fasaro, Kenny, was uh, very unhappy when he was pulled out of the starting Number rotation. 11. And rightly so, he's done a very nice job for the Red Sox Chuck all year. Noblar. Jimmy Williams taking Tim Wakefield out of the rotation, taking Fasaro out of the rotation, bringing up Shorick. There's Chuck Nablock to the plate with two outs. Of course, when you're struggling to make things happen, a lot of shifting around. Inside, nice stop by Hatterberg will hold Tino Martinez at first base. And Pacero had been pitching well, and then all of a sudden he had a few bad games. And then he goes to the bullpen. Of course, Wakefield's been more or less, you know, a starter, a reliever. Well, Tim Wakefield has done anything they have asked him for. And then last year he started, he relieved, and then in the postseason roster they took him off the roster, which didn't set well with him. Pitch is a strike to Knobloch. Chuck Knobloch, Kenny, is having trouble getting his timing down. And, and you love the way Torrey handles things as he was walking by Knobloch in the clubhouse today. Just walked by him, didn't even stop, and just turned and looked at him and said, you will get a hit before the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> and just kept going. And, of course, Knobloch just had to laugh. <laughs> Chucky fouls it off. <laughs> you have to remember he hasn't played in over a month. Your timing goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, though. <isn't> it? <laughs> <laughs> right now, Chuck is down on the count, a ball and two strikes. It kind of reminds me of the story. Paul Blair and I were leaving a hotel, and we ran into Earl Weaver. And Earl said, where are you guys going? We said, we're just going to get something to eat. So Earl says, okay. He says, Singleton, you get two hits tomorrow. And he looked at Paul Blair and says, Blair, please try and get one, okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course, Blair says, that, that proves it. He likes you the best. <laughs> now Block takes a pitch outside. The count is two and two. Chuck trying to prolong this top of the fourth. The Yankees had a leadoff single from Tino Martinez, but two outs since then. Tino's still at first base for Knobloch. Martinez is running. The pitch is inside, and it's a stolen base. Standing up for Tino Martinez. Now that's adding insult to injury here. Well, Tino <laughs> stolen four out of five now this year, and what a jump he got at first base. All right, take a look at this. Look at Tino. What a jump. Shurik hadn't even finished his windup yet, and Tino <laughs> sort of tippy toes in there. Stolen base number four for Tino Martinez. Now he's in scoring position. Now block swings and drills it over the roof and out of the ballpark. Foul. <laughs> just a little early on that. You could see he knew he wanted that pitch and just started the swing a little bit too early, a little anxious. Well, here's where Chuck has gotten the count to three and two. So now all he has to do it, you know, if you walk and you haven't been hitting, you feel good because you you've gotten to first base. But now you also know you've got the pitcher where he has to throw a strike. Derek Jeter's up next. He's been swinging the bat well. Payoff pitch. Curveball. Drilled foul right in front of Willie Randolph. So he's got the right idea. He sees it, but is a little anxious to try and pull the trigger here. Scott Brocious didn't even use a glove that time. Ah, oh, didn't even move. Didn't Wait. even move. <laughs> <laughs> These hands are gold. 
Knobloch swings and spoils another 3 2 pitch. Yankees three runs, five hits. They haven't made it there. The Red Sox have a run on three hits, and they too have played errorless ball. Red Sox, in fact, in danger today if the Yankees beat them and the Blue Jays win. Blue Jays move into second place in the uh, American League East. And the Blue Jays are in front currently, currently three to one ahead of Detroit at Skydome. Not block takes and it's ball four. So when you, you you haven't been hitting, a walk is like you know a, a monumental rally. Personally, but Joe Kerrigan's going to go out to the mound and talk to Pete Shurik. Shurik, with all these arm problems, does not have that many pitches in it, and you know that uh, he's not going to go much more than five innings. And probably isn't going to even go that. But when you look at what Knobloch did with that, that's very good. And that's Knobloch trying to get the timing back. He's thrown uh, 76 pitches already, Pete Shurik, and we're only in the top of the fourth inning. Is John Cumberland out there with Jeff Fasaro? He looks like he's right. Doesn't take him long to get warmed up. Here's a guy who's going to have elbow and shoulder mm -hmm. surgery at the end of the season, and he's out there pitching today. Number two. I guess the feeling is they can't make it any worse. Well, they have assured him that it isn't going to get any worse. And if he can pitch through the pain to try and do it. Here's Derek Jeter, who increased the hitting streak to 11 consecutive games with a triple off the wall in center. He eventually scored in the third inning. Now he's up there with runners at first and second and two outs. Shurik misses. Ball one. And you can see he can't find an arm slot here, Ken, and he's not able to follow through at all with this delivery. Jeter swings a slow roller to the left side. Maloney in front of Garcia. Proud to throw to second. Not in time. A hustling Chuck Knobloch beats the throw. And it looked like there was a little confusion on who was going to field that ball, either Merloni or Garcia Parra. And with the runner crossing in front of them, Merloni tries to cross in front of Garcia Parra, and I think he stopped for one second, but the speedy Knobloch yet got in there. And it'd be interesting to see how they Number score that. It's not necessarily a fielder's fielder, choice. Bernie Williams. So the inning will continue. Due to the fact that Chuck Knobloch with two outs hustled in the second. And now the bases are loaded for Bernie Williams. Bernie has single and forced the runner. Bernie singled and uh, drove in a run. When Jeter scored, there's a pitch for a strike in the second, in the third inning. And for Bernie, it was his 112th run batted into the year. Bernie just taking batting practice and playing just from the right side. Cannot swing from the left side. For sure, his 10th season. Check swing by Bernie Williams, and it's a ball and a strike. Shirk, of course, started his career with the New York Mets. Tino Martinez at third. Chuck Knobloch at second, and Derek Jeter now around at first, and Jeter will be credited with a base hit. And he can thank Chuck Knobloch for that. Bernie, as he does, the key situation steps out, makes the pitcher wait, trying to dictate the pace of the at bat. This might be the last man that Shurik sees. There's a pitch in there for a strike. They got Jeff Fasero all warmed up in the bullpen. One ball, two strikes to count on Bernie Williams. Yankees three, Red Sox one. Fasero just standing by. He's all heated up, ready to go. Bernie swings and just got a piece of it, fouls it off. Now, the last time Bernie came back from the same injury, Ken, when he was batting right-handed, he, he said he felt very uncomfortable and just really couldn't 
pull the trigger from the right side, but with the bases loaded, Bernie has done some job in 360. Nine career grand slams. Brian Thompson and Glenn Allen Hill. Talking over hits some hitting. Bernie swings and fouls it back just below us. A little to the left, and the count holds at one and two. Sure, changing speeds. Bernie fouled off an off-speed pitch. Fastball inside, fouled that back. You have the feeling that Shurik, if he makes one mistake, Randy Kiesler is going to get some more runs to work with. We look at Kiesler on the bench. The last Yankee to win his major league debut as a starting pitcher at Fenway Park was Ralph Terry in 1956. So. Well, this is not a great place for left-handers. The Yankees won that game four to three. That's high two and two. It's funny you try and think of some of the lefties who have been terrific in this ballpark who did pitch for the Red Sox and Mel Parnell, Bill Lee, yeah. Bruce Hurst. Some really hard throwers, guys who change speeds, hit spots. Sink the ball away from, and mm -hmm. make you hit the ball to center and right center as a right-handed hitter. As Andy Pettit did yesterday. He was outstanding. 2-2 two -two pitch. Bernie swings, drills it, just missed Willie Randolph. Well, he's still with some of that quickness. Now, remember, he's fighting that uh, broken rib. Oh, look, look at Willie. <laughs> you know what? There's a lot of Red Sox fans would like to see Willie Randolph get hit with a ball. No, I don't yeah, think so. believe me. Of course, Willie was part of that uh, 78 uh, comeback by the Yankees. That game yesterday had almost that 78 oh. playoff feel, didn't it? Well, having uh, been traveling on the way up here, when I left my house, the Yankees were losing one nothing. When I got the hotel, the Yankee, the Yankee fans were, the Yankees came back and won. So, um, the best pitcher on the mound, the only pitcher that's consistent. They were showing close-ups of the faces in the stands, Ken, late in the game. Hmm. Those faces you only find in Fenway hmm. Park. It's not just sadness; it's <laughs> despair. <laughs> <laughs> Very melancholy. Bernie swings and just got a piece of it. Foul tip off of Atterberg, the catcher. Bernie's had quite that bat one way or the other here. Just gets a piece of this. This is what Bernie had said, Ken, about not being able to pull the trigger as quickly from the right side. Kind of strange because he is a natural right-handed hitter, but in the last couple of years, he's had more and more difficulty from the right side. Bruce Fremen giving Hattieberg some time here. That ball looked like it hit him right underneath the chin. Okay. Catchers in the umpires and, you know, men with the mask, sympathy. Sure, slowing things down. Bernie Williams steps out. Couldn't slow them down much more. No, well, you know, this might be the turning point in the game. Bernie swings, ground ball to the right of Garcia Parra. Up with, he's going to go to first. The long throw is in time. Garcia Parra with a strong arm. Sure gets out of it. Yankees lead the bases loaded, do not score in the top of the four. They hit to the half. Red Sox half of the inning. It's three to one Yankees. This summer, get an ordinary 4x4 four four and do ordinary things. Or get a cheap 4x4 four four and do extraordinary things. Thanks to the Jeep Summer Clearance. Buy a new 2000 Cherokee Sport and get a $1,000 cash allowance plus financing as low as 0.9%. Or lessees with preferred credit can lease one for zero down, $279 a month, and 1104 due at signing with all this at no extra charge. So hurry to the Jeep Summer Clearance. It's anything but ordinary. Check out this 279 lease at your Jeep dealer. Picture it. Where do you want to be? Five years, ten years. Is it cold, hot, blue, green, white? You can get there from here.
without hair loss. Now there are effective FDA-approved treatments for men's hair loss. The sooner you make an appointment to see your doctor, the better. Or call 1-800-73-MERC to find out more. Merck, helping make hair loss history. Fans, New York Yankee baseball is brought to you in part by Infinity, manufacturers of the 2009 30 Performance Luxury Sedan. It's all the best thinking. Ben Singleton and Susan Waldman. Young fans enjoying a sunny afternoon here at Fenway Park. The Yankees leading three to one and watching the major league debut of Randy Keesler. Whose prayers were answered when he was now not traded to Detroit or any place else. <laughs> Grew up with posters of Roger Clemens hanging in his bedroom from Houston. There is no more Garcia Parra. Singled off the green monster in the first inning and drove home the Red Sox run. Nomar has been slumping of late. I have a feeling it's not going to last. Fastball catches a corner that's called strike one. Last 85 at bats, Garcia Parra's had two extra base hits. Line drive to left field. This might be a third. Glenn Allen Hill will play down the corner. And Garcia Parra is in the second with a leadoff double. So Nomar is two for two off of Randy Kiesler. And you can see Kenny, he just, he got it almost in the same spot, but Nomar gets enough strength on the end of the bat and turns on it with enough strength to get into that left field corner. For Garcia Parra, that's his 44th double of the year. And here is Dante Bichette. Bichette flied out to center field and Bernie Williams to end the first inning. Popped up. This looks like it'll make the seats. It's out of play. Now he got away with one there because if you you keep a fastball up to Dante Bichette, he could hit it to the Sitco sign out in left field. Got a little too much of the plate there. And up a little bit much with that fastball. You got to keep the ball low to Bichette. Loves it up and over the plate. Up and in and fouls that off. Came right back in on his hands. Couple of fastballs. Bichette was runner up to Barry Larkin a few years ago in a National League MVP. And a lot of people feel that. Larkin, of course, didn't have the offensive numbers, but a lot of people feel that Bichette might have been slighted because he played at Coors Field for the Rockies and put up some tremendous numbers. Kiesler head on the cap, no balls and two strikes. Looking for his first major league win in his initial start. That's outside with the change, and it's one and two. Well, you can see they're trying to keep the ball away from Bichette. And when he went in, he really went in. My change in my curve have really come along this year. This is for Randy Kiesler. The change is a good pitch for me, and it's helped the fastball. If he can keep the fastball down and keep it over the plate, he sets up that change with that fastball.